Hey everybody, it's me Steve, I'm the creator of the channel, and this is uh, a commentary. I'm finally going back and commentating for some of my older videos. In this case, I'm doing a commentary on Meet the Fanboys and Meet the Fangirls, the first official episodes in the Planet Goofball series. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've done more of these over this year, over the course of 2021, so I, I think... Yeah, I think, think of finally starting like to get the hang of doing this the series of videos a little bit more. But this is a very interesting one, the making these two videos in the same month. Uh, yeah, the scripts were about the same length, but one thing I was a little nervous about was how uh, how they turn out, especially like you know in the space of one month. Uh, the good news about this one was I had a jump start because uh, a lot of the content that I did like the month prior was actually pretty easy to put together. So uh, this one I had plenty of time to write both this one and Meet the Fangirls all at the same time. So I had a jump start to hopefully get this video out by the beginning of the following month. And sure enough, yeah, I was able to get this video out at the beginning of the month, and was able to get Meet the Fangirls out by the end of that month, so pretty happy with that. The concept itself came from, uh, the, the idea for it pretty much started late 2019, and I was trying to think of what to do with Pony Fanboy, and I still wanted to do pony-related stuff, I still wanted to do some fanfiction content here and there, but I wanted to do more story-based stuff. So, uh, the idea for it came around me just doodling with the little Pony Fanboy illustration that I had and applying a bunch of different fandoms to it, and I sent it to a couple of my fellow content creators at Toxic Dragonfly, and uh, I think it was Critical Kid, Cody, I think he was the one that was like, oh man, you should do something with that, that could, that could be fun. And so, sure enough, yeah, I finally sat down and thought of this idea of, like, what if there was this planet that had this giant convention center and a bunch of different fanboys lived in it? And it was basically just, like, a nonstop convention for different fan bases. And all the fanboys and fangirls were essentially just the same person, but they all came from different dimensions. Kind of like, um, kind of like, you know, the, the syndicate of Ricks from Rick and Morty, I guess, or something like that. Um, and so, yeah, from there, then, then a bunch of these different ideas came about of, like, what fan bases would be represented. And the idea of the other three fanboys, the PPG, KP, and MLATR fanboys, they, that came around with, uh, originally the idea was every video was going to be about a different fan base and Pony Fanboy hanging out with them, but then uh, I figured, like, you know, and slowly the friend group would start growing, but then I was like, okay, then there'd be a little too many characters to work with, and I think over, over time, it's just eventually become, every video is just basically about every character, like every little small group of characters, it's not necessarily just about these four main ones that we see here. But um, then I, I thought about these three fan bases specifically because I realized they both, they all had, they all had the same kind of, they all had the same, uh, like, same kind of slant that Friendship is Magic had. And that is that there were shows that looked like they were specifically made for girls, but they had audiences that also had males in it. So, yeah, that's that's where the idea of... And also because, I mean, you know, they all have varying similarities, because, you know, Rob Renzetti was the creator of Teenage Robot, but he also worked on Powerpuff Girls. Um, and then they had, like, Powerpuff Girls and Kim Possible were also the most popular things on their networks at the time. And then, you know, Kim Possible and Teenage Robot were very similar in terms of plot and characters. So I think that that's where the similarities came from. And I just wanted to have each of them interacting. And I figured that they'd be the best of friends. And then the idea for that just kind of spun into its own thing of like, oh, well, they're roommates and they hang out. And obviously there's a bunch of clashing between the differences and similarities between these shows. And obviously that's where... Um, that's where fanboy origins came from. Uh, <laughs> this joke about all the different waifus in Cuphead, which is then <laughs> repeated later for all the waifus in Naruto. Um, I don't really know where the whole idea of the waifu discussion panel came from. I knew I wanted to use it for something in the series, but I didn't think that it would be the very first video for it. Um, so instead of trying to think of like how I could fit it into a, into a narrative, I just decided to make the narrative of this video centered around that. So that's where the idea of the waifu discussion panel just... And then like gradually it building up to a nerd fight, I just thought it was a really funny idea. 
And uh, from there, it was like, okay, got to find a way to rep to rep represent all these different fandoms, and also try to find like different character balances and character interactions for each of them. And that's you know because we just saw uh, Steven Universe and Rick and Morty fanboy, and they were you know kind of fighting. Like their whole thing is that like Rick and Morty is like you know a wannabe edge lord, and the Steven Universe fanboy wants to be like you know holier than thou and self righteous. It's basically a way to poke fun at like the stereotypes of these fandoms. There's the Naruto fandom waifu joke. Um, and then you got like a couple other ones like Microsoft, uh, or I'm sorry, Xbox and PlayStation ganging up on like Nintendo and Sega. And then you got this thing right here with the Star Wars fandom as like, you know, three different sections of the Star Wars fandom. And like they're all like, you know, divided amongst themselves. And that comes back a little bit later. And that's kind of referenced in other videos too. Like it's briefly referenced in At Your Streaming Service and uh, what was it? Retro Party Night. Uh, yeah, I think that's one. This was, yeah, this whole group right here, this was going to be the original friend group. Uh, cause, but then I realized, I'm like, a lot of them are Disney. There's not, it, it felt a little too, like, unvaried. Even though, let's face it, those were the popular shows that were around the time. That intentionally bad joke. But, um, but yeah, I, I thought it was, I thought it would be interesting to, you know, like, have three different fan bases that were all representative of... The, the big three channels that a lot of us had growing up, which was Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, and Disney Channel. Um, and that's where, that's where the other, the main three fanboys came in. Because I felt like they kind of represented that. Oh, here we go with the, the discussion. Like, I just love the idea of all these different little fan discussions going off on, like, these tangents. Because I thought it kind of summed up the whole purpose of the series. is like, how would different fan bases interact with each other? And how would they point out their similarities and their differences? Um, uh, here's another example of, like, fandoms, you know, being the ones that are always so quick to fight. That's obviously, uh, you know, DC and Marvel. And I like that they're the ones that start the nerd fight. It seemed like the kind of appropriate thing to do. Especially considering, like, all the discussion that was going on at the time about, like, uh, you know, comic book movies and, like, oh, who had the better ones and yada yada. So I, I thought this would be, was kind of a good way to segue into the nerd fight. <laughs> Uh, now this was probably the most fun to put together, was like putting in all these different little visual effects, like the dust effects and the, the fist clouds that we just saw. Um, and then like what fandoms would be fighting who and like what would they be doing, and of course you got these guys with their action figures. And I knew I had to have Godzilla, a Godzilla fan in there at least once just because the next video had Mothra, so I thought it would even it out. This is another joke I always wanted to do. It's like, what if Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon fans were trying to use their own cards against each other? It's like, they'd obviously be trying to argue like, no, this, this one has more points than that one. This one's better than that. And then Digimon had to throw in there because it's another one of those kind of things. Uh, here we go with the, you know, the Star Wars fans feuding with each other. And I just, I just think that, like, I just think it's funny that, like, one big franchise has to be segregated into three different fanboys. <laughs> But it's weird because the, in the Meet the Fangirls one, there's only one Star Wars fangirl, and I, I, don't, I don't know why that is. Maybe there are more fangirls, and we just, I just didn't have them out at the time, so, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, cut over to the, the fantasy fans. Uh, yeah, cut to these guys. These guys are fighting. I imagine that these guys are, like, the definition of frenemies. Like, they have a lot in common, and at the same time, they have a bunch of differences that keep them down. Uh, here we go, one of my personal favorite reoccurring ones with, uh, the Invader Zim fanboy. Uh, and here we go with the digs, you know, we got how Invader Zim was screwed over and ended too early and Spongebob's still being run to the ground. Uh, and also there was a Butch Hartman joke in there, just because, like, the, the discussion about Butch Hartman was still going on at the time, so I thought it would be funny to... It's like, how does it feel that your your creator is creating a Christian Netflix knockoff? And apparently that's still ongoing. Uh, who knows, maybe that'll be a future video. Hopefully for Chris. I'd like to see Chris do a video about that. Uh, and I like this little thing back and forth between uh, DuckTales fanboy and Pony fanboy. Because obviously both shows have a lot in common. Specifically the episode from... DuckTales that had two voice actresses from MLP playing pony characters, so I like that these two kind of have like a little bit of a you know a friendship going on, and who knows, maybe that'll be explored in a later video. Um, 
pony. It was explored in, in a Pony Fanboy Reads earlier this year, so that's something. Once DuckTales ended. And uh, this whole thing right here of like, you know, once the dust has settled, once Pony Fanboy is out of the, you know, the thick of the crap, you know, then he meets up with his friends and they cheer him up by taking him out for smoothies, which is a tradition that's followed in the next video with the fangirls. Um, you know, but that whole, yeah, that whole fight scene was actually really fun to put together. It was really cool to, you know, finally start working with, um, you know, green screen effects and trying to do stuff like that. And I was really happy with the way that whole nerd fight scene came out. Um, and the music in this, in these videos is one of my favorite things because it's pretty much the, the only, the only thing, the only thought process that went into the music was just using music that I thought was cool at the time. Uh, like the music at the beginning during the narration that James did, by the way, thank you, James, for doing that opening narration. Like he literally gave that to me in like five minutes, like after I sent him the script. So yeah, James, thank you for that. That's awesome. Uh, but the song used in the beginning was Incredibad Bad from Lonely Island. And this is from Too Many Zoos. It's their cover of Get Busy by Sean Paul. Uh, I just thought it was so catchy, so I wanted to go along with it. Uh, only other thing to point out is, uh, speaking of awesome people doing appearances, we got Patrick playing a, a convention attend, uh, not an attendant, uh, a convention uh, employee basically. Because I, I needed, I wanted it that like the fanboys and fangirls weren't, you know, were the only ones that had the same sounding voices. But you know, when it came to like you know adult figures, I wanted to get like some fellow content creators to do voices. So that's why, and Patrick was the first one to volunteer. Okay, so. Boys. I just, yeah, the idea of just the stern guy who works at the convention telling them to all stop, and if they don't stop, then they'll all be sent to their rooms and all that kind of stuff. Basically, as a way to be like a parental figure. And then I just had to throw in Shrek fanboy just because Shrek was, you know, again, that's another fandom that's so popular, I could there's no way I couldn't have referenced it. Anyway, so that, that wraps it up for um, Meet the Fanboys, so now I'm going to move on to Meet the Fangirls. So now we're on to Meet the Fangirls, and um, with this opening narration, speaking of awesome people doing uh, very short notice narrations, uh, this is Shannon from Shannon Reviews. Thank you so much, Shannon, for doing this. But um, yeah, with these opening narrations for both this one and the first one, I, I just needed something that would be like a basic explanation for what Planet Goofball was and the process behind it of why you know or how that this this company like planet goofball would invite these people and i think it's better examined in uh fanboy origins and fangirl origins because there it's pretty much shown like you know how um powerpuff fanboy got the invitation in 2005 once powerpuffs ended kp got it in 2007 once kim possible ended TR got it in 2009 and, you know, so on and so forth. And this was the very first video that brings up that Pony Fangirl arrived in 2011, and that's obviously shown at the end of Fangirl Origins. So, yeah. I just, I, I think it does a good job at setting up the basics, but I feel like it's better explored in the actual origin videos themselves. Um, so, uh, the Fangirls are voiced by Kat, a very close friend of mine. And, uh, I, 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 cause she was one of the first few people that I spitballed the idea to and she liked it. And I was like, well, do you want to do the voices of the girls? And she was like, yeah, sure. Why not? So the only basic rule that I had for her was for the four main fangirls, try to do like just vaguely Valley girl accents, like not, nothing too extreme, but you know, something so that, you know, they kind of have like personality for their voices. So it's not just, you know, us doing our regular voices. And, you know, I, and I, I, I don't know why exactly, but I just kind of figured that the Valley Girl voice was, you know, very, or, you know, no matter how exaggerated it was, I, f I felt like it was kind of a, you know, a, a good female counterpart to the, you know, the, the squeaky, navely, lispy, pony fanboy voice. So, yeah, that, that explains why the, they sound like the way they do. Um, but Kat took it a step further, and I actually really like what she did, because... Each of her fangirl characters all have different voices outside of the four main ones, as we'll soon see in a sec. Um, now, one thing about why some of the fangirls have glasses and other ones don't, it all just came down to aesthetic. Like, I tried to think of, like, like once I, I would try doing all of them with glasses, and I just didn't like how some of them looked with glasses, so that explains why... Uh, Brittany, Kimberly, and Jennifer don't have glasses. Although I, I will say they do look okay with glasses and hats at the end of um, Fanboy Origins and the beginning of Fangirl Origins. 
Um, I think the main reason was just I, I wanted them to stick out from the boys a little bit. Penny was the only one I thought worked with glasses because she kind of it kind of fits her whole like nerdy like kind of Twilight Sparkle ish you know side twy kind of appearance you know the fact that she has a ponytail and I thought that the glasses kind of went along with that whole thing so yeah. <laughs> And why backwards caps? That was just another example of, like, trying to make them different from the boys. So it's like, the boys have caps that are on forwards, the girls have the ones that are backwards. Um, and all the... The reason that I went with shipping instead of wife, instead of, like, waifu, or I guess in their case, husbando discussion, um, I think the main reason was just because I wanted there to be, again, something different yet similar enough that's my favorite line, by the way. That's I think that's Kat's favorite line too. The Godzilla and Mothra, because she just she she said that she had fun reading that out. Um, and I absolutely love all these different varying uh, fangirl discussions because it was it was fun to write, and then I would send it to Kat for like revision to be like, is there anything you think I should change? And she she had some pretty handy notes, and she was the one that suggested the whole star scream thing for um, the Transformers fangirl because that's apparently a thing. A lot of a lot of female uh, Transformers fans who are turned on by these characters say Starscream is the hottest. Uh, make of that as you will. Um, but I, I like all the, uh, the... Here we go with the, you know, it's not about husband, does it's about shipping. Uh, this was a suggestion from one of my friends, Joey, who, who was like, oh, you should have some, some um, sitcom fan bases in there. And so I tried to think of the ones that I was familiar with. So that's why I went with uh, Scrubs, which I knew had shipping in it. Seinfeld, which had some very minor shipping in it, um, was, which was a lot more on the sarcastic side, because, of course, it's Seinfeld. Um, you, know, uh, you know, Pam and Jim, the most obvious choices. And, uh, and also... Uh, there was another one. Friends that was in there. That was a lot of shipping. Oh, this, here's the other thing that was fun about the shipping discussion was mentioning the really weird, really creepy ships. You know, like, uh, I, okay, Spike, Spike and Rarity is one thing. Jenny and Tuck is one that I will never understand. And I think a lot of people, oh yeah, and that, no, that, but that one takes the cake. Rick and Morty, like, ship together. That, I, yeah, never wanted, never wanted to know that, and I'm sad that I know that. So, yeah, trying to bring it all back around to these different ships. You know, we got similar to the other one. You know, we got the Cartoon Network fandoms, we got the Disney Channel fandoms, we got the gaming fandoms. Uh, like, basically, just trying to think of like variations who would fit the mold of you know the previous one. Except, like right here, we got you know again we got Cuphead and FNAF. Uh, and then later we got, you know, the, the, um, Nintendo and Sega and then, uh, PlayStation and Xbox fangirls. <laughs> oh, and I absolutely love how Kat makes the, the Sega fangirl sound like, <laughs> she makes her sound like the stereotypical 90s, like, well, bro, like, I think it's really just funny to hear her do that voice. Um... Uh, the, they also have Letterman jackets. That that Letterman jackets thing. That's from um, a meme of there's like a guy and a girl wearing Letterman's jackets. One for PlayStation, one for Xbox, and it was like the Romeo and Juliet of the modern age or something like that. Uh, here, like yeah, here we go. For some reason, yeah, oh, it makes sense that there's one Star Trek fan girl because there was one Star Trek fan boy. I'm assuming there are probably two more Star Wars fan girls. It's just that they're not in this video. Who knows, maybe that'll be a thing in a future playing a goofball video or something. Um, and, and here we go, yeah, like referencing, you know, all these different, more diverse uh, shippings, which I, feel, I felt like I kind of had to bring up because it, it is such a big thing. So that's why I was able to, you know, to squeeze it into this one. Uh, oh, and there we go. We had to, I had to reference the Septiplier thing. Because that was a reference to a, a previous Pony Fanboy Reads, so I thought that it would be appropriate to have them come back. Um, here we go, like, the variations of uh, the fangirl counterparts of uh, Rick and Morty and uh, Steven Universe. And then we got my personal favorites of, like, the different fangirls. We got the Loud House fangirl and the Invader Zim fangirl, who I... <laughs> I, I think they're like they're pretty much the fangirl equivalents of the Rick and Morty and uh, Steven Universe fanboys because like the, I, I imagine I want to do more with these characters at some point. Oh, and this absolute slam dunk, and I was happy to put the little like roasted air horn sound effect coming up. Here it is. 
<laughs> that, that obviously that facial expression and the one that follows that's obviously from Teenage Robot because I, I wanted to do funny faces like that so I was happy I was able to replicate that I uh, thought that worked that worked really well but um, but yeah I want to do more with the Invader Zim fangirl and the Loud House fangirl characters because I, I feel like there's plenty to work with with that and then we got uh, yeah playing off of the fam the way the fanboy a video goes you gotta have uh you know mar you have to have marvel and dc fangirl you know they're about to start a nerd fight but you know thankfully that gets broken up early uh, and this is uh lindsay comrade kitty uh she's been a huge part of the channel she's a friend fellow reviewer she's absolutely great there's a separate video of her outtakes because she she had a couple of outtakes and she's like i even asked her i was like because she even hinted, she's like, if you want to make an outtakes video, go right ahead. And I was like, you sure? You want me to do that? She's like, yeah, go for it. Uh, and her one request was to make, you know, this kind of, you know, more, you know, aged sounding, you know, older woman employee. Make her sound like Droopy. Because she's like, she's probably just so done with these fangirls and their antics. So I was like, yeah, sure. That's funny. Go for it. Um... Uh, and the reason that this one doesn't end in a nerd fight was because I didn't want it to go the exact same way. But I, I like the fact that it eventually does kind of build to a nerd fight. We just don't see the nerd fight because we already did that in the previous one. And this one starts over, you know, well, it, it goes, you know, the fanboy one is based more on like, you know, f more of the fanboys getting physical with one another, you know, it, like rough housing that escalates. Here it goes to, like, kind of the New Age era of fighting, which is, you know, I'm going to write about you on Facebook. I'm going to write about you on social media. Uh, and that, oh, did somebody say kicking? That's obviously a SpongeBob reference. And, yeah, that's when the fight escalates. Um, all these different backgrounds, uh, I just go on Google Images and look up, like, hotel background or something. Like, hotel or convention center hallway or something like that like that that's how you, that's how i found a lot of the backgrounds that are used for this video for these videos um and once again we the, this whole running gag of the the phone names i noticed like because when i was like putting together all these different these four shows i realized i'm like wait yeah powerpuff girls they have the hotline and then kim possible it's the kim communicator like there was nothing like that in uh teenage robot I mean, aside from maybe, like, the monitor thing that pops out of Jenny's chest. And I guess the closest thing in My Little Pony was when Celestia would send Twilight letters. Uh, and once again with the music. Uh, the music at the beginning of this one was the same music that ended Meet the Fanboys, which I thought was an appropriate segue from that one to this one. And the music here is obviously, uh, you know, the sign from Ace of Base, which is super catchy, and I thought it kind of had the, fit the, the bubbly aesthetic of this one with the fangirl characters. Um, and, the, the, of course, the thing that ended off, just like how I, I felt like I had to have, like, a joke about the Shrek fandom, I felt like I had, to, there's no way I could have gone this whole video without bringing up, like, shipping, or, like, you know, annoying shippers within fandoms without bringing up one of the most obvious easy targets of a fan base, which was obviously the Twitards. So, yeah, that's I, I, that was just like an easy joke that I just want, I knew I had to end out on because that was such a big thing in pop culture was, you know, the love triangle between Edward, Bella, and Jacob. So, and Lindsay also does the voice here for uh, the mom. So that's another example of her. Yeah, that pretty much sums up both these videos. Uh, hopefully that gave a little insight to the behind the scenes of both of these. So, will I do more commentaries on videos? I'm not sure. I mean, if you guys want me to do more, you know, non-MediaWiz commentaries and such, yeah, feel free to let me know.